Good day. We are the first group of this Quintess task. I am Caitlin Quizon, and we are here to discuss and do a one-way repeated subjects ANOVA in SPSS. We were provided a research context, commonly known as our data, in which one is concerned about what the primary component of self-compassion is. And we will be looking at multiple dependent variables using the instrument three times with the same five participants. This questionnaire comprises the different characteristics that would determine one's self-compassion. Our independent variable would be self-compassion, and our dependent variable is the predominant component of self-compassion. So this would correspond to three levels, which are kindness, mindfulness, and common humanity. So we would want to know what is the predominant component of self-compassion. We would want to do this by clicking Analyze, General Linear Model, then Repeated Measures. The repeated measures defined factor box would pop up and it is given that the factor would be self-compassion. Hence, we must input that. And there are three levels, which are kindness, mindfulness, and common humanity. Then click add, then define. The next box would define what these variables are. So we would understand that we tested each participant in these three different conditions. Then we would move each variable here into the within subjects variables. Next, we would go on to the plots, then put self-compassion on the horizontal axis and add that, which will also help us to interpret. Moving on to the post hoc, we could see that we don't have any factors that are applicable for this. Thus, we're moving on to the next part, which is options. And we would want to put self-compassion in the display means for, then click on compare main effects, and then we would use one for only. Then we would click on descriptive statistics as well as estimates of effect size. Remember that we would set the alpha level of 0 0.05. Then we click on continue, then OK. Then we would be able to run the analysis. Interpretation. Our first box right here is within subject factors. We should take a note at how the values were assigned to our variables. One being kindness, two, mindfulness, and three, common humanity. Because this would play a part later in our plot. Next is descriptive statistics, which displays the mean of each test, standard deviation, and number of participants for each test. Next is our multivariate test, which in the tutorial, he referred to the Wilkes Lambda as his metric system. But in this context, it is the p-value is essentially the same, which is less than 0 0.05, which means statistically significant test. Next is Moakley's test of sphericity, which is quite peculiar because its p-value is greater than 0 0.05, because we normally measure our p-value to be less than 0 0.05 to be significant. But in other videos that I watch, you would want your Moakley's test of sphericity to have a p-value greater than 0 0.05 because that would yield to a significant test. Okay, so, but if on the premise that you have a p-value less than 0 0.05, then the table below would play a part. You can look at the Hünfeld's f-value and you could observe that it is the same as everyone. Although the degrees of freedom was adjusted, you would want to see its p-value, which is 0 0.00, that is less than 0 0.05, which means it is significant nonetheless. But either we all of them as a p-value less than 0 0.05, so that would mean we have a statistically significant test. Looking at the test of within subject contrast, we could also see here that the p-value has a statistically significant result. So we're just going to move on to the next table. Estimated marginal means. So just by looking at the mean score, we could already tell what is the predominant component of self-compassion, which is common humanity that has a score of 8.28, rounded up to its second decimal place. In pairwise comparison, it displays the mean difference among the scores and standard deviation and p-value. Now, this would be better if I read this along with the plot. This is what the plot looks like. Now remember the value that was assigned to 1 being kindness, 2 mindfulness, and 3 common humanity. And when we look at our pairwise comparison, the first comparison here is kindness and mindfulness which has a mean difference of 0 0.608 and a p-value of 0 0.497. 497 which is greater than 0 0.05 so it doesn't have a significant difference. In the plot, we could see that the test score is not far away from each other. The next comparison is 1 and 3, kindness and common humanity, which has a mean difference of negative 4.922 and a p-value of 0 0.004, that is less than 0 0.05, so it does have a significant difference. When we look at our plot, the mean score of kindness and common humanity is significantly far away from each other, so that's what it means. That goes the same for the possible pairs right here, so let's just proceed to reporting this in APA format. Since our problem only asks us to 
find the predominant component of self-compassion, this is how we wrote it in APA format. A one-way within subject and over was conducted to find out what is the predominant component of self-compassion among these attributes, kindness, mindfulness, and common humanity. The results indicate that there was a significant attribute that predominates self-compassion. So we have our F value here, which we are going to refer to in our test of within subject effect. F in our degrees of freedom, N degrees of freedom column, and N spiritually assumed row. And we also have our F value and our P value, which is displayed at the table. Then the next interpretation is post hoc comparison using the Bonferroli adjustment revealed that self compassion is mostly predominated by the attribute common humanity, which has a mean score of 8.28, which is statistically significant to kindness and mindfulness. However, the difference between kindness, which has a mean score of 3.35, and mindfulness, 2.75, is not statistically significant, with a p-value of 0.497.